Hello, I'm going to demonstrate Newton's third law of motion. Here we see Newton's third law stated, if object A exerts a force on object B, then object B exerts an equal but opposite force on object A. We can demonstrate that on this air track. Here I have a track with air coming out through these holes, and that allows this car to float on an essentially frictionless surface so that there are no forces in the horizontal direction on that car. However, if I have two cars and I let, if I call this object A, then this would be object B. Uh, they each have the same status. But uh, if I bring them together and allow a force to build up there as those two springs compress, and then if I release it, you can see the springs are deflected the same amount. Now let's watch what happens when these objects are released. They accelerate off with equal accelerations. They have equal masses, indicating that the force on one is equal to the force on the other. The only difference is the forces are in opposite directions. Equal magnitude, but opposite directions. Now, if I start with those cars coming together, you see the same principle applies. Each has the same force as the other. This exerts the force on this one equal to the force that this one exerts back on this one. So object A exerts a force on object B, and object B exerts the same amount of force back on object A. That's true whether they come in from opposite directions, whether one is at rest and the other one comes up and bumps into it, or whether they explode apart, or any one of a number of other possible combinations. Now, if I have a larger mass and a smaller mass, and we determine that the force on each is the same. We'll see that they'll go off with different accelerations. But nevertheless, uh, if I just compress them together here and let those springs compress and uh, observe that the force on each is the same, consistent with Newton's third law, the results, of course, are different because the masses are different, but the force on each is the same. That's true no matter how much mass we have. In fact, it doesn't really matter whether we have stiff springs like I have here or more flexible springs like I have here. If I have two objects, equal mass, and they have stiffer springs, it's a little more difficult to demonstrate that without uh, starting from rest here, but let them come in from opposite directions, and you can see that they bounce apart the same way. This exerts a certain force on this one, this exerts the same force back on this one. Equal and opposite forces. That also works if I have one car that has a flexible bumper and the other car that has a stiff bumper. Now here you have to be a little more careful in uh, thinking about this, but when I pull the two together, it appears maybe there's more force on this one, but that's just because uh, it just appears that way because this bumper is more flexible. It doesn't take as much force to deflect it as, as much. It turns out that the force on each is the same. The force that car A exerts on car B is the same as the force that car B exerts back on car A. We see they explode apart with equal accelerations and equal final velocities, and the same result if they come in from opposite directions. So it doesn't matter whether the bumpers are, are stiff or whether the bumpers are weak, whether the bumpers are different, or whether the bumpers are the same. Whether the mass is large, whether the mass is small, Newton's third law applies in each case. Even with forces that act at a distance, such as the forces I have here with these two cars, where I have a magnet here and another magnet here, and we see those magnets repel one another. So we can have forces that act at a distance, such as these magnetic forces. In fact, if the cars come up from opposite directions, they don't even touch, but they push each other apart with equal and opposite forces. Now on the other end, I have magnets that attract. And I'll let these two cars come in from opposite directions. And we see if they came in with the same speed, they would stop, indicating that the force on this car due to this one is the same amount as the force on this one due to this one. Another demonstration of Newton's third law involves the uh, rocket sled. 
Here I have a car with a balloon attached. I'm going to inflate that balloon. I'm glad it didn't pop in my face. And now I'm going to let the air come out of that balloon and let's observe what happens on this level track. And you can see the uh, jet propulsion as the car and the balloon blow the air backwards. The air, in turn, exerts an equal and opposite force on the car to propel it forward. One more example of Newton's third law involves the balloon that I'll blow up with this pump. And uh, then when I release this, we'll observe that as the balloon blows the air out the back end, the open end, the air in turn will push the balloon forward, indicating that uh, we have uh, two different uh, entities, the air and the balloon. The balloon pushes on the air, and the air pushes on the balloon. Equal and opposite forces. Now let's observe what happens. <laughs> Newton's third law.